I cannot believe in the same year we've been blessed with Across the Spider-Verse and now this movie. What's up you guys, welcome back to another one of my movie reviews. Today we are talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. After years of being sheltered from the human world, the Turtle Brothers set out to win the hearts of New Yorkers and be accepted as normal teenagers, but they soon get in over their heads when an army of mutants is unleashed upon them. Also just letting you know, I won't be talking about any spoilers in this review, so if you haven't seen the movie, you are completely safe. So first I wanted to say, if you don't know anything about Ninja Turtles from all the movies that came out before this, this is not a sequel of any kind, and they tell the origins of these characters, and also you might be wondering to your yourself, oh these turtles all look the same, how am I going to tell them apart? Well the movie makes it really easy for you. On their belts it literally has the initials of the different characters so you won't get lost who's who. And of course I can't talk about this movie without fangirling over the animation. Like I said in my Nimona review, which you can watch right up here, I said that we are in a renaissance of animation and this movie really just solidifies that. Ever since the first Spider-Verse came out, everything's changed. It reminds me of when the first Toy Story came out. It kind of revolutionized the Pixar style. But now that Spider-Verse came out, every animation is trying their own kind of stylized 2D plus 3D animation. And I am so here for it. The animation style in this movie specifically, I think a lot of people are going to see it as grimy and dirty and ugly, but it's kind of the point. Much like Spider-Verse, the animation style actually plays a part in telling the story. It feels grimy because the story takes place in the sewers and the streets of New York where things are not clean and pristine. Also you'll notice that characters will have asymmetrical faces and it kind of plays into this theme of mutation and imperfection. Also all of the animation takes place at night but it never feels like the movie is too dark. There's always some kind of lighting around and it's really well done especially because of how stylized the lights are. They look like they're scribbles. It's almost like a little bit of like a Van Gogh meets graffiti style. I also need to talk about the voice work because whoever casted the actors to play these characters, every single character felt like their voice belonged. Literally tens, tens, tens across the board. So notable shout outs is obviously the main turtle squad. They're actually teenagers and they have great chemistry and great banter together. Also Jackie Chan plays Splinter, which is perfect casting. In this movie, he's actually more fatherly and more caring than in other Ninja Turtle movies that I've seen where he's more of this mentor, sensei kind of character. Also Ice Cube as Superfly, he was so, so funny. And of course the rest of the cast is also stacked. We had Paul Rudd, we had Giancarlo Esposito, we had Maya Rudolph, and of course Ayo Adibri. What also sells this movie is that the comedy worked really well. To me, it was never annoying and it was always very, very charming. And it makes every single character super likable, even the bad guys, actually, especially the bad guys. And it made the world seem so much more fun. Part of the humor also comes from a lot of pop culture references. I feel like it got to the point where it might've been too many references, where if we watch this movie in 10 years, the jokes might not be relevant anymore. Also a part that I found really interesting was that they actually used Gen Z lingo and sounded like Gen Z and not in a way where it seemed forced like millennials are telling them to say these quote-unquote Gen Z things and part of the reason is because the actors who play these turtles are actually Gen Z and they were told to improvise some scenes together so a lot of the dialogue from them actually feel very realistic. The pacing of the movie was also incredibly well done. It's only 90 minutes which is really refreshing especially when we're getting more and more three-hour movies and they don't waste a second of that. And they're also able to balance talking and action scenes very well. It didn't feel like they were dragging out anything. The soundtrack was also incredible and they were never distracted acting or out of place, they always added to the events happening on screen. My one critique about the soundtrack is that they used a lot of 80s and 90s music, but a lot of the references that they're using is very current, so I honestly could have used a little bit more current music. They also have a very strong theme about acceptance. They kind of delve into the topic of either assimilating with the world or 
dominating the world, essentially. And it's actually pretty similar to what the first Incredibles explored, where superheroes are banished to the shadows and are in hiding, but Syndrome wants to make everybody superheroes. So we get to see a similar storyline play out in this movie. I do have one small criticism for this movie in terms of plot. I won't spoil it, but the ending is kind of something we've seen in a lot of animation, including recently Nimona and that Teenage Kraken movie, and also a bit of Little Mermaid, and that was just this year alone. So I feel like maybe they could have gone in a different direction for the ending. For those of you that have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It just feels a little played out. But besides that, I honestly didn't have that many other issues with this. So the movie does set up the possibility of a sequel. There is a mid credit scene, and for those of you that are familiar with Ninja Turtle characters, you will definitely be pleased with that ending. So how does this movie compare to some of our other biggest animated features this year? So compared to Super Mario Brothers, I think this movie was way better in terms of story and plot and pacing, but it will definitely not be as popular as Super Mario Brothers since this franchise is just has never been as mainstream as Nintendo. Although I feel like it is really worth the experience in the theater. Now the big question is, how does this movie compare to Across the Spider-Verse? I actually think the animation is on par with Spider-Verse, if not even a little bit more experimental. And it's really unfortunate because I feel like if these movies didn't come out at the same year, I think this movie could have a very strong chance of winning Best Animated Feature, but I still feel like Spider-Verse is going to just win that category no matter what. But you know, it's good to see how much competition there is. I also think that this movie in particular is way more accessible to the general public compared to Spider-Verse. I think Spider-Verse relies a little bit more on an existing fan base for Spider-Man and getting the little inside jokes and details but this movie, you don't need to know anything, so I think that's a win for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But Spider-Verse definitely leaves you with more to think about and to encourage more discussion. I think this movie, however, is really straightforward and it's a little on the simple side, so not as deep. So with all of that said, I will have to give this movie an 8 out of 10. Super, super solid. I would actually say this is probably either the second or third best animated film this year. So what did you guys think? Do you think this movie is better than Spider-Verse? And what did you guys think about the animation style? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you guys enjoy animation, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and check out some of the other animation reviews I did. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everyone.